I'm Rob Jones. I'm a preservation fellow with the Center for Desert Archaeology, and uh, we're here in Mule Creek at one of the sites that's very important to my dissertation. Right now we're sitting on an obsidian dome, which is uh, one of the primary exposures of what we call the Antelope Creek obsidian source. This is one of the three chemically distinct sources in uh, Mule Creek, and this is probably the largest by volume. Obsidian is a good material for archaeologists because it's chemically distinctive. In other words, this source, the Antelope Creek locality, is, can be chemically distinguished from other sources uh, found in the southwest, which means that when we find one of these nodules in a site in Tucson, we can source it to this chemical source. Within this perlite are small nodules of obsidian uh, that we call maraconites and that are sometimes called Apache Tears. These maraconites are what people prehistorically would have been using and trading. Uh, it, it's a very nice flaking material and it was often used to make anything with a sharp edge, usually the tiny black arrowheads that, uh, that we've all seen that come from the, the later periods of the Southwest. We know that all kinds of material culture is moving around the landscape of the Southwest and beyond prehistorically. My own dissertation research has involved looking at the assemblages of sites all over the Southwest and chemically sourcing the obsidian found at those sites. When we do that, we get a profile of what kinds of obsidian the people at these sites all over the Southwest are using. One of the things that we've been surprised about is the prevalence of Mule Creek obsidian, and not just Mule Creek, but particularly the obsidian source behind me, which is the Antelope Creek chemical source. My dissertation research has been a combination of field work here in Mule Creek to establish the demographics and social situation here at the sites closest to the, the Mule Creek obsidian sources, as well as extensive museum collection work uh, looking at the other side of the trade, where the Mule Creek obsidian has moved, how far it's moved, and where it's being preferred over other kinds of materials. We see a, an increase in obsidian circulation in the 1300s, and particularly of the obsidian from the Mule Creek area. It seems to be much more widely circulated in the 1300s than it is earlier. One of the objectives in coming and doing work in the valley adjacent to the subsidian source is to see who is inhabiting the valley, what those social processes are, and who it could be that's driving this uptick in circulation, at least from the supply side. So in tracing out the subsidian circulation, what I'm really interested in is the relationships of people. We know that at the end of the 1200s, uh, communities from northern Arizona spread throughout the southern southwest. One of the theoretical tools that I'm using to try and understand this is this idea of diaspora. We have tremendous ethnographic and historic literature about communities that have been, after a migration, spread throughout a territory uh, and interspersed with other communities that still maintain a social identity and a sense of who they are despite the community separation. And that's really what diaspora means. Obsidian helps us trace diasporas because Obsidian is solid evidence of the circulation of goods and with them people and information. We can learn a lot about how communities are interrelating to each other, how they're building and sharing identities, and where they're dividing, where boundary lines are being formed between communities. The Salado phenomenon is usually addressed through ceramics. The problem with looking at Salado through ceramics is that the ceramics are very widespread and it's hard to see relationships within the spread of the Salado polychromes. One of the things that I hope my research allows us to do is look at the ways that these communities are interacting, migrant, non-migrant, communities focusing on Salado polychromes, communities peripheral to what we think of as the Salado phenomenon. Those interactions are gonna let us draw connections and borders that we can't see in traditional ceramic analysis. One of the surprises from crunching our data at 3UP was that even though it's closer to the North Sawmill Creek obsidian source, they're using a tremendous amount of this Antelope Creek obsidian dome behind me. I'm not sure why yet, but I'll get back to you. That's what research is all about. <laughs>